I'll be honest, I had a hard time revising for computer science. The lack of online resources, no extra questions, a good amount to memorise, not to mention we had to balance coursework on top of that, all led me to achieving a C in my mock exams. But after finding the best resources and most effective techniques, I was able to take that C and then merge it into an A in just one month. Wanna know my secrets? Keep watching. What's up guys, my name is Kieran. In this video, I'll be going through everything, the method, the exam techniques, and the resources that I use to achieve a high grade in computer science in just a short amount of time. I'll also be going through what I think could have been done to achieve an A star. Just for context, I study AQA, but these tips are made suitable for all examples, so keep watching. In the first part of the video, I'll be going through tips for the theory side of computer science, and then later I'll be going through the programming side, and at the end, I'll share extra tips that can help you achieve an A star in computer science. All right. Let's get straight to it. The theory paper contains questions to test your memory and your understanding, which means it's not as problem solving based as the other paper. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to memorize definition, keywords, and concepts, but you're not gonna to wanna to write flashcards and you're not gonna to wanna to take notes. There isn't enough time for that. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to use Quizlet. Quizlet is a website which contains online accessible flashcards. On Quizlet, you're gonna to wanna to search the exam board that you're taking, A-level computer science theory. And from that, you're gonna find flashcards based on theory. You're gonna to wanna to learn and quiz yourself on these flashcards 10 to 15 minutes a day. These flashcards are made by online users, including myself. Yes, I create flashcards for computer science. In fact, I'll link the ones that I create for AQA in the description. They're very useful for AQA paper too, so if you want to, feel free to use it. By quizzing yourself repeatedly, you're employing the most powerful learning technique known as active recall. Active recall enhances retention and understanding. And Quizlet utilizes this technique everywhere, giving four different ways to memorize your flashcards. Me personally, I'd recommend using the learn mode. Learn mode even gives you different options to build on your short-term or your long-term memory. Famous alternative to Quizlet is known as Anki. Anki flashcards or something like that. During the time of A-level, I didn't know much about Anki, so I'm not gonna hype it up and guess it up as much as I did for Quizlet. But I do suggest looking into it and researching which is better. For what I know, a lot of people prefer Anki, but I've just never used it before, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I should probably start using it, not gonna lie. But yeah, just quiz yourself on those flashcards because you're going through active recall. My next tip is to follow the specification and also use physics and maths tutor. Weird that I included both of them together, but hear me out. First, let's talk about the specification. The specification tells you what content you're going to be assessed on. It gives you the learning objectives and also provides you with relevant definitions. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go through the specification and highlight concepts that you either haven't learned or you're not too familiar with. And now we introduce physics and maths tutor. PMT notes is primarily based on the specification. Each topic, each concept in PMT is structured in the exact same order as your specification. Don't believe me? Look at this. Natural, integer, rational, irrational, real, ordinal numbers, counting and measurements all in the same order. <laughs> Can't make this up. Now, because time is short, you're not gonna wanna go over every single PMT note available, no, no, no. Instead, take the topics highlighted in the specification and find the corresponding PMT note to that. So let's say, for example, in the specification, I highlighted communications. I will go on PMT notes and then find the PMT note to do with communications. I'll just read it and then learn it from there. PMT notes are sick as well. They have three different types of notes. They have advanced, intermediate, and concise. During my A-levels, I went through the concise notes and I found them very helpful. Advanced notes do go a lot more in depth, but if you wanna save time, then concise notes is a very, very good alternative. But do check those out. An alternative way to help you understand concepts are through YouTube. Now, a famous YouTube channel that people would always recommend is Craig and Dave, but I've got some more. I've got Mr. Brown, CS, and Computer Science. I think this name is just called Computer Science, which is sick. Do check them out. I really like Mr. Brown CS. Mr. Brown CS also gives you um, tips on coursework, so do check that out as well. But yeah, utilize specification, PMT notes, and also YouTube. My next tip is to practice exam style questions. And I'm not talking about past papers or even textbooks. I'm talking about this workbook right here. A lot of people don't know about this workbook. This one's for Computer Science Paper 2. has questions on every single chapter. A few weeks before my exam, I went through all of this and found it very useful. Get a hold on these ASAP if you can. I'll link these in the description. This one's AQA, but there's also one for OCR that I'll link as well. Another one, another one that I got is the essential math skills for computer science. Goes over vectors, goes over binary arithmetic, 
um, anything to do with maths and computer science it goes over so I think this is mainly useful for OCR. AQA, it's kind of useful. The only part of this I found very useful was Boolean algebra and also like converting binary into different forms. So like the mantissan exponent. But other than that, I didn't really find very useful. It might be useful for different examples. So yeah, do check it out. This next tip is more of a calculator trick. Um, this will be quick. I just wanted to share to you how sick this calculator is. If you're doing a mathematical subject, let's say maths, further maths, economics, physics, you may have a hold of this. Um, this is the Casio FX991EX class with calculator. This calculator is able to perform binary, decimal, and hexadecimal conversion. Let me show you how. You're gonna wanna hit menu, then you're gonna wanna go to base N, which is the third option. Let's say you wanted to convert the number 36 from decimal into binary. You can see closely, you can see the blue writing. Click on decimal, hit equal, and then you can change to hexadecimal and you can also change into binary. But yeah, just like a quick little neat trick just to keep you easy at your exams. I think it also works with negative numbers actually as well. Yeah, that's sick. It works with negative numbers as well for two's complement. So yeah, just like a little quick calculator tip. I don't think a lot of people know about that actually. So, so yeah. <laughs> Right, so this tip goes for both paper one and paper two. Practice as many past papers as possible. Practice repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. As many past papers that you can access online, just practice them. And do all of these past papers in exam conditions, just to help with your exam stress and your time efficiency. Just so then you know exactly how long you should spend on each question. What I think for AQA theory is two and a half hours is a long, long time. I always finish the paper half an hour early. So then for the actual exam, I realized I didn't need to spend too, too long on these questions. I can space it out and I can go at a decent pace just so then I'm not feeling too stressed for the exams. Find out what works best for you. You may finish the paper an hour early or you may finish the paper later. It doesn't matter, just work out what's best for you and then go with that. Hi guys, sorry for interrupting. There is a lot that I mentioned in this video. So if you want to take this time right now to go back and rewatch different chapters of the video. So then you can absorb as much as the information as possible. And just as a disclaimer, all of the tips that I mentioned work best with me. If they don't work best with you, then that's okay. I do appreciate that there are limited amount of online resources for computer science. So I try to include as much as I can in this video. But if you do find any that works best with you, please use that and just go with that. The tips that I covered so far cover the theory side to computer science. Before I go into the next tip, I just want to explain paper one. So paper one, which is the programming paper, consists of four sections. Section A, B, C, and D. The section A and B covers general programming questions. So things like trace tables, Turing machines, and that's the first half of the paper. The next half of the paper consists of section C and section D. Both of these sections contain questions about skeleton code. Skeleton code is just code that AQA students are expected to learn beforehand. This is because section C and D ask questions about the skeleton code. Okay, that's paper one in a nutshell. I'm gonna move on to the next tip now, but just to mention as well, if you have found this video useful so far, please consider liking this video and also subscribing to my channel. God bless you all and here's the next tip. Section C asks questions about the skeleton code and section D asks programming questions to improve the skeleton code. One advice I've got for preparing for section C and D is to use the website called Wikibooks. Wikibooks contains predicted questions for both of these sections. For 2024, I think you have a logic solving puzzle or something like that. There are 18 exclusive predicted questions for you to have a go at, which is insane. There's also solutions to these questions. So, so whether you're learning Python or JavaScript or whether you're learning C, you know, it's all there and you can refer to it. And that is for section D. For section C, you're gonna wanna understand um, polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, local and global variables, etc. Know what they mean and know where they'll be used in the skeleton code. As I last checked on Wikibooks, I don't think there's any questions to section C for this year, unfortunately, but these are questions asked on previous years. For example, there was this question on instantiation, lists where instantiation has been used, or lists where a local variable has been used. Just because it's a different year does not mean it can't be applied to your skeleton program. So utilize Wikibooks. Wikibooks is so simple. This tip will be for section B. In section B, you'll be asked a random programming question. And I can tell you 90% of the time, you'll be using an array. You'll be using an array 90% of the time, I guarantee. You. And because of this, you're gonna wanna get used to um, operations to do with lists and to do with array. During my editing, I'm probably gonna list a few of these operations as an example. I study Python, so 
they're all gonna be Python based, I think. But yeah, just get familiar with that. Section B is very problem solving based. And because of that, you're gonna to wanna to practice as many questions as possible. My teacher was actually very useful for this. Yeah, he got all of the section B past paper questions and laid them out into a single document. Each day I'd do a question and I'd time myself for 15 minutes. And if I ran out of time, I'd stop the question and answer it again the next day. I'd train myself to answer these questions correctly in under 15 minutes. This because for me, I found paper one very time pressured. I felt like I needed to get these questions completed on time. <laughs> Not only that, but for myself, like anytime I do a program question, I'm determined to get it finished. I'm determined to fully answer the question properly. Sometimes I get it under 15 minutes, but other times I go overboard. It'd take me half an hour and I know I can't afford to waste that many time in the actual exam. So if I just train myself to answer it in under 15 minutes, no matter what I got, it's just very good practice for me. Section A contains general programming questions. So like trace tables, Turing machines, any general programming questions like understanding terminology and definitions and all of that. All of those questions will come up in the section. A tip that I mentioned in this video was to practice exam solve questions. Now, thankfully, there's a programming version of this workbook. You're gonna to wanna to try and get a hold of this if you can and practice as many questions as possible. They're actually very useful. Past papers are also a very good alternative. Um, I found difficult understanding terminology, understanding all of the terms for sets, for um, object-oriented programming, all of that. I found it difficult until I utilised Quizlet. Use Quizlet for object-oriented programming and understand all of those terms, understand all of those definitions. If you literally just type in AQA, A-level computer science, paper one, you're bound to find questions that will help you understand these terminologies. This goes to if you're doing any other exam board, by the way, not just AQA. So yeah, that tip covers all of paper one. If you're planning to absolutely smash these A-level computer science exams, then these tips are for you. These tips are gonna be the ones that I wish I was told. Ones that I overlooked and ones that I didn't really consider. The first one of these tips is to lay off coursework. For AQA, coursework is a staggering 20%. 20%. Not to mention that as soon as you get a certain amount of marks, it's harder to get a bit more because you need a lot more detail in your report. And all of this is just exhausting. I'm not gonna, coursework was the most, one of the most exhausting things I've ever done in A-level. The amount of waffling I had to do for my A-level computer science coursework was, it's crazy. I think I spent like four hours to get two extra marks. It's like, it's just not worth the struggle, not worth the hassle. I'm not gonna lie as well, apart from that, just me spending my time and my effort into coursework was low-key draining to the point where I didn't even want to revise computer science. After that, I was just like, I need to focus on my other subject. I need to focus on my maths and my physics. I didn't even want to touch computer science after that, which is just mentally draining. So just try not to put yourself through what I went through. <laughs> if you're looking at this video in year 12, please, start your coursework as soon as possible, as soon as you can get on it. Don't do what I did, which is procrastinate because you couldn't think of a good idea. For AQA at least, it doesn't matter too much about how creative you are. If you have any questions on coursework or how to think of it like a, a good idea, please do ask me. If you're doing any other exam board, then you'll probably find a better answer from your teachers, so do ask them. But if you're in year 13, don't stress, you can still get an A star. In fact, you don't need to get an A star in your coursework to get an A star in general. It's 20%, so just lay it off. My final tip for you guys for computer science is to take breaks and space out your revision. But yeah, do take these breaks because ultimately you have enough time. I'll be so honest, one month is more than enough time to move you up a load of grades. All of the tips that I mentioned in this video, I did not complete to the full capacity. I completed like four out of the 12 questions for section D in Wikibooks. Two weeks before A-level started, um, I'd spend 10 to 15 minutes on the school bus just going through Quizlet. I did that and I was still able to get from a C to an A. So just imagine what you can do. Space out revision, take breaks because you're not gonna wanna burn out for these exams. Instead, go on a walk, you know, exercise, do something very productive. So use this as a reminder to consider doing that. But right, there's a lot of tips that I mentioned in this computer science A-level video. I hope you found it useful and I hope it was okay. I hope this video wasn't too long as well. If you have found this video useful, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below any questions, any thoughts of the video, any questions in general for A-levels, then please do DM me on Instagram. And please stay tuned for more videos coming up later. 
All right, God bless you all. I wish you nothing but blessings for these A-level computer science exams. You guys are gonna smash it. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and peace.